Hello guys, welcome to learning microcontrollers. So guys, this tutorial is on downloading, installing and using Picket 3 programmer tool. Usually you buy a Picket 3 or 3.5 or 2, whichever you have from the market. Then you have to interface with a computer. For that, you need a software. For that, we use a software called Picket 3 programmer tool. So let me show you how you can download and install it. So guys, what I'm going to do is that I don't know on the internet where you can download that. But I will give you this link. I had uploaded it, this in my Google Drive. So I will give you a link to this Picket 3 Programmer tool setup. And this link will be in the description of the video. So you can just open it and you click over here once you open it and it will download the file. So let it download. So this will be way easier for you instead of looking on the internet from where you get the software because it's uh, other versions are also available. So now see the file is being downloaded. Let it download. Okay, it's downloaded. Click on this folder icon. Go to the folder where it is downloaded. Copy it and place it at suitable place and make some folder in which you will paste the file. I call it Picket 3 set, uh, programming, programming Software Setup like this. Now open this. Go inside this. Paste it here. Extract the files. You will need a WinZip or any zip uh, opener software. Now, once you extract it, this file comes in, double click on it and install it where, wherever you prefer. Let it install, click on I accept, select the path, click on next. It's just a small tool, 7.6 MB. I install it in drive D microchip 1 picket 3. Okay, it's installed, it's simple as that. Go back where you install it, click on micro chip so let me find the folder where I had installed it this is a folder microchip one and inside it double click on this picket C and this is the file you double click on it and wait connect your picket C to the computer either you can connect it earlier or you can connect it later if you connect it earlier it will take some time to load up because my device is already connected so here you go, it started up. Now see the device is already detected. Now in case you have not connected your device earlier, uh, I disconnect the device. See, I click on read, it will say lost communication to programmer. Now I connect the device. Now the device is connected. It will not detect your device as soon as you connect it. Go to the tools and click on check communications. Now see, it is detecting packet 3. If it's successfully detected, now you can use the, it says found packet 3. Now you can use the packet 3. So it is easy. If you have not connected your packet 3 before starting the software, then that's simple. Uh, you connect your packet 3 and then you go to the tool and click on check communication. It will detect the packet 3 is connected or not. Or let's say, uh, now after you get your device uh, connected, then you have to go here. Whichever the pick you are using, you have to select it manually. In this video, you have to, I'm using pick 16 fa 7 a it is a picket 3, picket 2, picket 3.5 all work here. So I am using picket 3.5. It has more microcontroller support. So this is the one pic 16 fa 7 I click on it. Now you will use my earlier video which is called uh, setting up your uh, hardware uh, to set up the hardware to and connect the picket 3.5 over there. And I will share the link of that video in the description of this video. Then once your picket 3 is connected, you click on this read icon to see if it is successfully connected. See, if it successfully reads like this, it means your hardware is connected. Now, if you want to write something, you will go to the import hex file. Click on the file which you just want to write. Double click on it. Click on write. The new file is being written. Just wait. See, it is writing the new file. So once it's written, then you can verify the code as well. Whatever the file you have selected here, source file. And whatever the code is in the microcontroller, that will be compared. If both are same, then it will be successfully verified. So the code is burnt. Now I verify this. The code in the file and in the microcontroller must be the same, else it will give error. Now see, this code was burnt and it successfully verified. No error. Now I select some other file. Uh, I had burned this file. I select this file. And I try to verify. See, verification device program failed. So that's what the purpose of it. Erase will erase the code. Now see the code is erased. 
there is nothing in the pick. See all FF, nothing in the pick. Now the blank check will check either your controller is blank or not. See, blank checking done. Now I burn something and I again run the blank check. I burn this code. I click on write. The new code is being burned. It's simple as that. Wait for it to be burned. Now I click on the blank check. Okay. See, it says failed. That microcontroller is not blank. There is some code in it. I erase the previous code and now I perform the blank check. See, now it's successful. There is no error. Blank check is done. So this is simple as that, guys. Uh, the link to this software is will be in the description of the video along with the setting up your hardware video uh, link. And if you still have any questions, you can ask in the comment. Uh, and guys, there are other software as well like a micro e-programmer tool. They also do the same thing. You can use them. But I always prefer you use this and select the microcontroller manually. If you accidentally give them the wrong this configuration, then your controller may get blocked. So you have to be careful. So it's good practice to select the microcontroller manually, whichever you have over there. This will also verify that controller is original. So uh, thank you very much for your time, guys. And I hope you learned something from this video. And have a nice day. We'll see you in the next video.